Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you all to your Pakistan studies class. My name is Rakshi Saleem and I am working with Frontierian Academies from the last 16 years. Okay, class 9, today we are going to cover our first chapter that is ideological basis of Pakistan. So first we have to understand what does ideology mean. Okay. So ideology. It is a French word and it is the combination of two words. The first is idea and logic. Idea which means opinion and logi which means science okay so the idea means an opinion or belief you can say so we can say that ideology is the science of ideas okay so the term ideology means the science of ideas or system of ideas it consists of the ideas which a nation strives to accomplish in order to uh, bring stability and homogeneity to its nationhood. Now what is a nation? When Now first we have to understand what is a nation. So the group of the people when they are living together and they are having the same, uh, they, are, they are living in the same territory and then they are having same religion, same culture, values and are ha they are having same goals and future and a definitely a common past so it makes a nation so we can say uh, the collective thinking of the nation is called ideology okay what does ideology means the collective thinking of a nation it is called ideology and then um, we can say that it's a comprehensive vision. Ideology is a comprehensive vision of a nation and a way of looking at things like uh, it is a system of ideas and it do reflect this ideology do reflect the thinking of the people or uh, the people how they are thinking and what do they want to achieve okay the first is ideology let me explain it here this is ideology and before we move towards the ideology of pakistan i would like to discuss two nation theory okay so first is ideology i hope you have understood this thing now two nation theory ideology two nation theory and then we will move towards ideology of pakistan remember one thing whenever you are asked about the question that what is ideology of pakistan so it is better to discuss ideology then two nation theory and then ideology of pakistan because this two nation theory is the base of ideology of pakistan so two nation theory let's discuss this thing the pioneer of this theory was sir sayed ahmed khan sir sayed Ahmed Khan. Uh, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan uh, presented this theory which means uh, in very simple words that Hindus and Muslims are two separate nations. As I told you what does a nation means. So uh, if we go through the history uh, the Muslims and Hindus they have a shared um, shared time which they spent together it is almost 800 years or 1000 years 
Okay, and Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, after 19, uh, 1867, after 1867 he presented this two nation theory and why he why he is the pioneer of this two nation theory a very interesting fact is that sir sayed ahmed khan was in favor of the hindu muslim unity he was in favor of the hindu muslim unity but later on some events with like some events developed and he realized that it is not possible for the muslims to live together with with hindus so the very first one is in 1987 the urdu hindi controversy urdu hindi controversy i hope you people know what is the history of urdu as you know it is even urdu is a turkish word and which means lashkar or uh, the group of the soldiers uh, urdu is developed in the urdu was developed in the mughal era it is the language of muslims so when the muslims conquered subcontinent and uh, then in the last dynasty in the mughal dynasty urdu flourished in in 1867 some of the prominent hindu leaders they wanted to replace um, urdu with hindi they wanted it to be the official language of the offices and the courts so the hindus were against um, urdu language then sir sayed ahmed khan gave this idea that if the hindus are not tolerating our language so how they are going to tolerate the muslims so they cannot live together so the two nation theory emerged and it means that hindus and muslims are completely two a nation and they should live separately okay so we have discussed ideology and then two nation theory now we are going to move towards ideology of pakistan so this two nation theory is the basis of ideology of pakistan and how does it emerge this this that we should understand this thing um like before the creation of the pakistan the muslims of the south asia they wanted to establish a separate muslim state so where they can live according to the golden principles of islam so this is the ideology of pakistan the whole idea was to establish a new state a separate state so where can the muslim live according to the principles of islam so you can see that the idea emerged okay that was a two nation theory or idea of the two nation that the muslims and hindus are totally separate nations and then they decided they they should have a separate state so where they can live separately according to the their religion is the principle of religion islam uh, i hope you have understood this thing that um, how this two nation theory is the base of ideology of pakistan so we can say the collective thinking of the muslims of uh, south asia it is called ideology of pakistan next topic is basic elements of ideology of pakistan and the first element the most important element of ideology of pakistan is islam so the basis of pakistani ideology um, and separate nationhood of the muslims is a kalma tauhid okay so uh, the muslims were a separate nation i mean due to their religious differences with the hindus and uh, as qaid e azam said that pakistan came into being when the first indian or the first non muslim converted uh, into islam acha so and the second uh, the second thing is islamic system of life islamic system of life islam is a uh, 
complete code of life. It provides you solution, all kind of solutions to your social, economical, political uh, problems. And it is a complete code of uh, life, as I told you. So uh, the basic aim of making Pakistan or having a separate nation, uh, separate state, was to solve these economic, political, and social uh, problems of the Indian Muslims. And then uh, the next uh, uh, the next element is democracy. As I told you that the Hindus and Muslims were living together in the subcontinent for almost 1,000 years. So a time came when they realized uh, that it is not possible for the uh, for the Muslims of the subcontinent to accept the idea of the Western democracy. But the basis of democracy is the respect of the say the majority, as, it, as you know this thing. Um, and uh, to um, and to respect the rights of the minorities uh, and then the freedom of the speech. So democracy is the right of self-determination, I mean, according to which every nation in the world has the right to decide a future for them. And it was not possible for the Muslims in the um, in the subcontinent. So this is the this is the main element of the ideology of Pakistan that they wanted to have a separate state so where they can so where they can apply the democratic ways of Islam, the democratic principles of Islam, not the Western democracy. Okay, and then uh, the next thing is social justice and equality. Remember one thing, a society without justice can be a complete disaster for the human beings. So uh, the Muslims, they wanted to have such kind of state or the uh, state so uh, where there is a social justice and equality irrespective of the caste, the religion or creed. Um, all are supposed to equal in the eyes of the law. It is the basic principle of the ideology of Pakistan, the basic element of ideology of Pakistan. And then the important thing is the fundamental human rights. Fundamental human rights Achha, there are the rights like uh, these are the rights that are evolved in society for the welfare of the citizen and uh, what is the meaning of the human rights like it includes safeguard of life respect and uh, property freedom of religious beliefs and practices freedom of speech and and earning of a respectable living. Now this was the, uh, the very important element or the special uh, element as the Muslims of the subcontinent they suffered a lot in the uh, Hindu majority areas or the United India or subcontinent you can say. So they wanted to safeguard their basic human rights and the only solution of the uh, of the safeguard of the basic human right was Pakistan. Now, the equal rights of minority. When we are talking about the basic human rights, so we should know this thing that equal rights of minorities is also very important. Achha. The non-Muslim citizens, they are called minorities um, in, in, in Pakistan and remember one thing uh, that Muslims were in, uh, the number of the Muslims was less than Hindus in the subcontinent. So there they were having the, stating of the status of the minorities and 
they were suffering a lot due to this thing so they the the creation of the pakistan it was the only solution to not only have their own basic rights and then they should also give basic human rights to the minorities the minorities like in pakistan it can be sikh hindu parsis christian and the people of all the other uh, religion they are working together in pakistan and and they wanted to develop such kind of nation such kind of uh, state where the desired um, they they desired to maintain their religious identity and this is the basis of ideology of pakistan okay and this this these all these elements are according to the islam as i told you the very first element is islam and if you can see the islamic system of life the islamic democracy social justice and equality fundamental human rights and also the equal rights of minorities all these things are alhamdulillah we can see these in pakistan now we are going to discuss the sources of ideology so these are the sources sources of the ideology of pakistan religion religious values culture and civilization social customs and history so what does religion means um the beliefs the way of worship the custom and the moral values collectively uh, they are called a religion and it is a very important element of uh, creating ideology of a nation if you can uh, as we have discussed this ideology of uh, pakistan and i would like to quote here qaid e azam who said that we are not uh, we are not demanding uh, pakistan to acquire a, uh, a piece of land in fact uh, we want a homeland where we can introduce the principles of islam so it means that the religious values or of islam is the base of basic source of ideology of pakistan and then the culture and the civilization what does culture means uh the way of life that how the people live it includes their all their customs language religion their belief art education it is called culture collectively it is called culture and it is a code of life and the social customs as i told you the way of the living of any specific society every society has its own culture and it is a very important element because all the societies it can be of any nation they want to preserve their culture and civilization and how they can preserve their culture culture is something which is transmitted from one generation to the other generation okay and the muslims of the subcontinent they wanted a state so where they can protect their own culture because they uh, the, the big the biggest fear was they that they may lose their identity as a minority in the subcontinent then the next one is social customs the social norms and the principles of any society is are called the social customs all the social custom or conditions are also very important in any ideology the religious values and all these things then the history the past of any nation is called history and remember one thing that the living nations can never forgive uh, forgive forget their history and uh, it is a very significant element and without knowing their history they cannot be a prosperous in the future so studying history or preserving history is in fact to prepare yourself for the future so it is also a very important source of the ideology now importance of ideology now we are going to discuss what is the importance of ideology um in fact ideology provides the cement binding base to the nation or the scattered group of in a society okay and bring them closer uh, to each other 
Now, uh, so the first uh, importance of ideology is definitely unity of the nation, okay? As I told you that it is the binding cement, it provides the binding cement and it do provide such kind of uh, elements uh, to the groups of the scattered group of the society. They bring them closer to each other and, and provide a common platform. So it develops unity among the people of the nation and provides them strength, definitely. So it is a means of the unity and strength. The next thing is that ideology is the identity of a nation. This ideology gives you identity. Um, it in fact preserves the identity of a nation. And then the way of progress. Development and progress, okay? Um, ideology paves uh, the way for development and progress of a nation. And the most important thing is that ideology is the reflection of past, present, and future. How? How it reflects the past, present and the future that ideology offers an interpretation of the past. Remember, interpretation of the past, explanation of the present and a vision of the future. What am I saying? Interpretation of the past, okay, and uh, the explanation of the present and the vision of the future. So it means that ideology is the reflection of past, present and future. Then the fifth one is it do provide a clear, it do provide a clear destination to a nation. How? This ideology is the motivating force um, so the nation can uh, bring stability and homogeneity uh, to its nationhood and definitely they, uh, they follow a joint line of action for the accomplishment of their aims collectively, I'm talking collectively, okay. And this is the basis of the constitution and law, ideology is the basis of constitution and law. Um, you can easily frame the constitution and laws, any country can easily frame their constitution and law if they are having a clear ideology. And then it is the custodian of the culture and civilization. The custodian of culture and civilization. As we discussed it in our previous topic, that ideology helps you to preserve your culture and the promotion of your culture of any nation. And then it helps to encounter difficulties and problems. difficulties and problems. If a nation is keeping in view the guiding principles uh, of their ideology, that nation can easily cope up with their difficulties and problems. Uh, now this is the end of our uh, importance of ideology.